Electric current is electric charge in motion. It can take the form of a sudden discharge of static electricity, such as a lightning bolt or a spark between your finger and a ground light switch plate. More commonly, though, when we speak of electric current, we mean the more controlled form of electricity from generators, batteries, solar cells or fuel cells. Most electric charge is carried by the electrons and protons within an atom. Protons have positive charge, while electrons have negative charge. However, protons are mostly immobilized inside atomic nuclei, so the job of carrying charge from one place to another is handled by electrons. Electrons in a conducting material such as a metal are largely free to move from one atom to another along their conduction bands, which are the highest electron orbits. A sufficient electromotive force, EMF, or voltage, produces a charge imbalance that can cause electrons to move through a conductor as an electric current, according to Sarah Theron, a professor of physics at Pittsburgh State University. While it is a bit dicey to compare electric current to the flow of water in a pipe, there are some similarities that might make it somewhat easier to understand. We can think of the flow of electrons in a wire as the flow of water in a pipe, according to Michael Dobson, a professor of physics at the University of Colorado Boulder. The caveat is that, in this case, the pipe is always full of water. If we open the valve on one end to let water into the pipe, we don't have to wait for that water to make its way all the way to the end of the pipe. We get water out the other end almost instantaneously because the incoming water pushes the water that's already in the pipe toward the end. This is what happens in the case of electrical current in a wire. The conduction electrons are already present in the wire. We just need to start pushing electrons in one end, and they start flowing at the other end almost immediately. According to the Georgia State University's Hyperphysics website, the actual speed of an electron in a wire is on the order of a few million meters per second, but it doesn't travel straight down the wire. It bounces around nearly at random and only makes progress at a few millimeters per second. This is called the electron's drift velocity. However, the transmission speed of the signal, when electrons start being pushed out the other end of the wire after we flip the switch, is nearly the speed of light, which is about 300 million meters per second, 186,000 miles per second. In the case of alternating current, where the current changes direction 50 or 60 times per second, most of the electrons never make it out of the wire. Charge imbalances can be created in a number of ways. The first known way was to create a static charge by rubbing two different materials together, such as rubbing a piece of amber with animal fur. A current could then be created by touching the amber to a body with less charge or to ground. However, this current had very high voltage, very low amperage, and lasted for only a fraction of a second, so it could not be made to do any kind of useful work.